So, we continue with our discussions about different IoT connectivity technologies from where we left in the previous lecture. So, we have gone through the IEEE 802.15.4 standard in the previous lecture and the different protocols that are based on this particular standard like Zigbee uh, uh, and so on, uh, wireless heart Zigbee and so on. In this particular lecture, we continue further and look, we look at few other technologies uh, for IoT connectivity and one of which is basically the Z web, which is a very popular uh, technology and it is particularly this particular uh, technology, the protocol basically is useful particularly for home automation application, any kind of home automation application, security systems and so on. Here also like the other ones in 802.15.4, the applications are based on the communication technologies which require low power, which have low power radio communication requirements. So, home automation nowadays is very important, very important because people are talking about smart homes and this is where you can try to think of adopting Z-Wave and the devices that support Z-Wave if you have to build home automation kind of applications. But it is not restricted to home autom automation alone, even for industrial applications you might be able to find the necessity or the usefulness of using this particular technology. And the beauty about this particular technology is that unlike Zigbee, this particular technology Z-Wave is simpler and cheaper. It can, you know, it serves the similar kind of purpose like Zigbee, but for small and medium range applications, connectivity requirements, Z-Wave can offer you simpler and cheaper alternatives. So, it operates in the ISM band like before. In the US, it is specifically the 908.42 megahertz band that is used. In Europe, it is 868.42 megahertz band and um, it avoids any interference with the 2.4 gigahertz band that is used by Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and different other protocols and standards. So, Z-Wave uses a mesh network topology to communicate among the devices supporting up to about 232 nodes in a network. So, as you can see for home automation this is sufficient, 232 nodes up to is quite sufficient in home automation application. Even for industrial applications also Z-Wave supporting about 232 nodes, Z-Wave nodes is good enough. So, let us look at how uh, Z-Wave works. Let us say we are talking about some kind of a home, you know I cannot draw a home good enough over here, but let me show you some home let us say, you know some home where you have let us say this is the living room, then you have bedroom 1, uh, this could be the dining room, this could be bedroom 2 and so on. So, in home automation you know using Z wave what you might be doing is that you can install something known as the Z wave controller device which can be you know it is a single controller device there in the entire home and there could be different there could be uh, you know these different Z wave compliant communication devices which could be there in the different rooms right. So, these are like these Z wave communication devices or the Z wave nodes commonly known as Z wave nodes. So, you have one Z wave controller, you have one Z wave controller in the entire uh, home and then you have multiple such Z wave nodes in the different rooms and we have seen that up to about 127 or 128 Z wave nodes can be connected using a single controller. 
So, this is a very attractive kind of technology that can be used for this kind of application. So, as I was telling you there is there is the controller node and there is the slave node. The controller is a central entity which sets up the Z wave network and manages other slave devices the Z wave nodes in the network. Each logical Z wave network has one home ID the network ID and multiple unique node IDs corresponding to the slave devices in the network. The network ID is of length 4 bytes and node ID each of these node IDs will have a length of 1 byte. The nodes can communicate only within their home network and the data rate that is supported is for a range of up to about 30 meters the range uh, the data rate is up to offered is up to about 100 kbps. 100 kbps in a range of 30 meters is good enough for many applications home applications home automation applications some small industrial applications and so on. So, that is why Z wave is a very popular technology it is low cost simpler technology compared to Zigbee and you know it can be used it can be used to support different home and um, you know industrial automation applications. The, top, the routing scheme that is used is source routing. So, source routing means what very simplistically put source routing basically a source node sends it determines the, the route in the network and then sends the packet from the source node to the entire network using the routes that are determined by this particular node the source node. So, Z wave considers only static devices in the network due to its source routed network topology. So, it is only static devices not mobile devices and so on. So, messages are routed through different nodes in Z wave in case of any obstruction due to the interior rail layout and other household appliances. And these obstructions are known as radio dead spots and these can be bypassed using a process in Z wave which is known as healing. So, dead spots radio dead spots can be bypassed with the help of the process of healing. Applications where it can be used are home and office, office automation applications, smart energy management applications, smart security, home security, industrial security, industrial surveillance applications, voice control enabled applications, applic appliance automation and control and so on. Now, let us look at another very interesting and popular standard which is known as the ISA 100.11 A which belongs to the ISA 100.11 series and this is a standard that is used for wireless network technology and was developed by International Society for Automation the ISA and that is why it is known as ISA 100.11 A standard. So, this standard primarily focuses on automation in industrial environments and obviously, this standard it is based on 802.15.4, but it is attractive for use like the previous technologies for use in IoT applications, home based IoT, industrial IoT and so on. So, features of some of the features of 100.11 A ISA standard are listed over here in front of you. The first one is that it supports multiple devices working on different protocols to interact in a single network simultaneously. So, as you can see from this particular statement you can understand that it is a good protocol for supporting interoperability and communication between different agents, different devices and so on. It uses the IPv6 based technology and adds the associated benefits such as increased address space and security. The encryption scheme that is used is AES encryption for offering security over 120 bits uh, sorry 128 bits. And because of its different features this technology is good for use in industrial of applications because it supports you know scalable solutions reliable solutions and so on. The kind of network topologies that are supported are star and mesh and the um, and the, uh, the, uh, the MAC protocols that are used are TDMA or CSMA CA based MAC protocol. So, applications are automation in large scale complex industries, wireless monitoring of industrial networks and devices, process monitoring and control automation in the industrial environments with large and complex setups and so on. 
Now let us come to another very interesting popular technology for implementing IoT which is the Bluetooth. Bluetooth I think most of you are already familiar with. This name is not new, it is used for different different purposes for setting up wireless network of different you know peripherals of a particular computer. Bluetooth are used in headphones also, Bluetooth, are, Bluetooth is used in mobile phones and so on. So, Bluetooth is a widely used technology which can help in setting up IoT based networks and network systems. So, let us look at Bluetooth in more detail. So, we have um, this uh, Bluetooth technology which offers wireless communication in short range. So, unlike Zigbee which we discussed earlier, Zigbee is good for medium range communication, but Zigbee does not offer good data rates. On the contrary, Bluetooth offers better data rates, much more improved data rates compared to Zigbee, but here it offers short range compared to Zigbee. So, there is a trade off. Bluetooth is particularly aimed at replacing the cables. So, there is a cable replacement protocol which I am not going through over here. If you look at the Bluetooth stack protocol stack, you will see that there is a cable replacement protocol that is supported by Bluetooth. So, this cable replacement protocol will help for communicating between these different wireless you know portable devices and so on. So, Bluetooth basically helps in forming ad hoc networks where there is no centralized controller and the devices they can connect with each other in short range using this Bluetooth technology. So, this ad hoc network kind of um, you know networks can be formed with the help of Bluetooth. So, there is a concept of PicoNet, there is something called scatter nets which again are not required. So, basically you know in a particular Pico, PicoNet is like uh, you know PicoNet is uh, something like this a very similar to the cells in a cellular network where in a within a PicoNet this is analogous to a cell in a cellular network. So, within a PicoNet you have a master master and uh, up to about 7 devices. So, within a PicoNet you have 8 devices that can be supported right. So, slave so this is the master master device and there are different slave devices up to 7 devices can be connected to the master. So, then you have you know another PicoNet where there could be a common slave node which again can be serving as a master node and so on for that particular PicoNet. So, like that you have PicoNet 1, PicoNet 2, you can have like this you know you can have different different PicoNets all of which are interconnected together and so on. So, this formed something known as the scatter net. Okay. So, you know it is not necessary for you to know, but just to give you a little bit of brief idea about how Bluetooth works. So, as I was telling you within a PicoNet, the network can be established between using about uh, from two, two devices that means one master one, um, one slave device, two to eight Bluetooth devices can be connected within a particular PicoNet. So, here are some listed features of Bluetooth. It offers low cost wireless communication, low power consumption, it offers low power consumption, it is that is why it is you, uh, you know attractive in IoT applications because IoT applications are typically power starved, energy starved. So, low power con communication is supported over here. Used in the ISM 2.4 to 2.4. 84 gigahertz 2.4 to 2.484 gigahertz band supports data rate of between uh, you know 1 mega uh, mbps 1 mega mbps to 3 mbps data depending on the uh, the version of the bluetooth that is used 1 mbps in the version 1.2 2, 2 uh, uh, for version 2 basically 3 mbps and so on and the operating range is 1 meter for class 3 radios 10 meters for class 2 radios and 100 meters for class 1 radios. So, different radios will give you different transmission range, communication range of Bluetooth. Application where Bluetooth is suitable for uh, use are networks or devices which will have smaller radius of communication, small communication range. 
So, connectivity with desktop and laptop peripherals can be supported with the help of Bluetooth. Wireless connectivity between different mobile phones and other portable devices can be achieved using Bluetooth. Multimedia transfer between devices is also very uh, you know a, a very attractive and widely used application of Bluetooth. Then automobiles will use Bluetooth for connecting with the multimedia and navigation devices. GPS devices are connected with the end user. So, these are some of these different applications of Bluetooth. Now, we will talk about another type of device which is known as the RFID. Right. So, RFIDs are very attractive, RFIDs uh, are also quite popularly used and uh, uh, RFID tags you know shopping malls you must have seen you know use of RFID devices, RFID tags to uh, you know which are attached to different uh, you know dif uh, different uh, you know different uh, uh, items such as uh, clothings and uh, you know different clothes will have RFID. Uh, tags attached, uh, different other um, uh, items on sale in the shopping malls will also have RFIDs attached to them. Then there would be something called the RFID reader, which can read from these RFID tags and so on. So, this is how the RFID basically works. So, RFID stands basically for radio frequency identification. Here there are three components, one is the tag itself, the RFID tag which is attached to different things like clothes, utensils and so on. Then there is the RFID reader which can read from the tag and then there is the RFID software which will power uh, this entire thing to operate. RFID tag stores digitally encoded data which is read by a RFID reader and RFID tag data can be read outside the line of sight as compared to the traditional barcodes or the QR codes that we uh, use quite often. So, some of the more features of uh, different other features of um, RFID. RFID tag consists of integrated circuit and an antenna which are covered with a protective material and these tags can be classified as passive tags or active tags. Active tags are the ones which has their own power supply for operation and data transfer. Passive tags are the ones on the other hand which do not have so and these will have to be powered inductively in order to transmit data. Applications of use of RFIDs are for storing uh, product tracking, store product tracking sorry, store product tracking, asset and baggage tracking, supply chain management, livestock tracking and management, um, automobile uh, tracking, authentication and access control and so on. Now, let us come to another very associated closely associated technology to RFIDs which is the NFCs. And this NFC technology also work very similarly, but has a difference. So, this is basically this NFC technology has been derived from the RFIDs. The NFCs unlike RF, RFIDs will work within close proximity with any physical contact uh, without any physical contact between the devices unlike RFID which has a longer range of communication. RFID devices you know the reader and the tag you can keep little bit separated, but here NFC basically devices will have to be kept in very close proximity right. So, they have to be close uh, kept very close and a NFC device can be of any two types active device or passive device An active device uh, uh, active type of device can both read and transmit data and a passive device can only transmit data, but cannot read from the NFC devices. So, this is the difference unlike the active and passive device concepts in RFID here it is little bit different and this is the difference between active NFC and passive NFC devices. So, uh, NFC operates in the 13.56 megahertz frequency band and the range of communication in NFC is less than 10 centimeters. So, it is much closer these NFC devices in order for them to communicate will have to be kept very close. Okay. So, basically let me just show you how it is going to be like let us say that you have in one of these devices D1 NFC device you have another device D2. So, here basically you know what is going to happen is this magnetic field is going to be generated this magnetic field is going to be generated. So, for it to happen you need to keep the D1 and the D2 pretty close to each other less than 10 centimeters apart. So, there are you know data rate supported in NFC is about 106, 212 or 424 kbps 
depending on the different, different you know circumstances different uh, uh, you know attributes and so on. And two communication modes are supported between two devices one is the active active and the other one is the active passive mode. Applications of NFCs very similar to RFIDs tracking of goods, banking sector, you know NFC enabled smartphones and uh, data communication between smartphones using NFC, security and authentication, low power home automation systems and so on. So, with this we come to an end of this thing. So, um, you know we have gone through different different connectivity technologies in the previous lecture and this one it started with going through the standard 802.15.4, then we talked about Zigbee, Z-Wave, uh, ISA uh, uh, you know 100, uh, then we uh, also talked about uh, RFID, uh, then NFC and all of these. So, all of these are different different wireless heart also. So, all of these are different different technologies that can be used in order to offer connectivity to power uh, to power uh, uh, the communication between the IoT devices uh, from in where uh, they are deployed. So, uh, so basically this connectivity is very important and in the next lecture we will talk about what are the different issues with respect to the networking of this. So, we talked about connectivity the communication aspects, but then the networking aspects are also very important and this is what we are going to talk about in the next lecture. So, as before these are some of these references that you can go through uh, further in more detail if you need to. Uh, and uh, uh, there could, you know if you search even further you would be able to get even more better understanding about each of these uh, different uh, uh, protocols and the standards that we have uh, gone through. So, with this uh, we come to an end uh, and thank you.